Today we're going to be talking one of my favorite types of photography. That's portraits. Ooh, absolutely love portrait photography and it's wicked, absolutely wicked in toy photography. So let's get it. So with toy photography, you don't always have to take these super epic, super amazing shots. Sometimes a simple portrait is more than enough. A lot of the figures and you know the toys that you've got are extremely well detailed and through a simple portrait, you'll still be able to convey a story for that character or the scene that they are set within. Now, one of the things that I really love about portrait toy photography is the fact that it allows you to practice techniques, you know, find out camera settings, practice lighting, posing, basically put all these things into practice. Now to shoot a portrait, it's usually best to shoot it in that horizontal mode so that, that the eye of the viewer is drawn towards the subject and they're not distracted by all the dead space or the surrounding that they're in. Though, you know, these are only tips, you know, they're not rule set and stay. That horizontal format also gives us more of that IG real estate that we're all after as well. So there is that. But like I said, with portrait photography and toy photography in general, it's up to you. Just like the sky is your limit. Let your imagination go wild and just do what you need to do. So today's video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share some tips on portrait photography that I have learned over my time doing toy photography. There was a period where, you know, portrait photography was pretty much all that I was doing. So I hope that you get some value from this. So let's roll on to tip number one. Okay, so think about angles, think about the character that it is you're shooting and think about the figure itself. A portrait doesn't have to be shot dead on facing the camera, but it can work with some aspects. Take this flame trooper, for example. By him looking straight on at the camera, it makes him seem a lot more confrontational, which works for a flame trooper, as you'd imagine. Now, look at this shot of Darth Vader as an example. Another terrifying figure, but how it's shot differently can tell a completely different story. So looking at Vader, he is obviously shot from the side here. This, for me, what I was trying to go for, it was it was basically telling the story of how much of a tragic character that he has become. And by just looking off to the side rather than having him face on, it takes Vader away from being a confrontational figure to a figure that is deep in thought, thinking about what has done, what he has become, what he's lost, you know, all that kind of stuff. So think about your poses, think about your angles, and think about the character itself. How can you tell the best story using these three things? Sticking with the same kind of theme, but focus on the eyes. The eyes are the most important aspect of a portrait when it comes to conveying the story or you know the subject that it is the subject it is that you are shooting. Eyes are just a beautiful giveaway as to what that character is thinking or you know telling a message that you're trying to convey through these shots. Pro tip as well, like the eyes is always the thing you want to focus on. So when you're setting up your focus when taking these, make sure it's the eyes that you're setting in focus because for portraits, that's where you're the viewer's eyes are, 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 are guiding straight there. So let's look at a couple of examples of this. So first of all, we have this Lucy Hartfelia figure here. Anime figures are perfect for this because their eyes are just so absolutely gorgeous. Now, we can see that we've got Lucy staring straight at the camera, which I said was confrontational. However, her eyes are a lot more alluring, you know, and they're a, lot, they're a lot more inviting. So yes, she's looking straight at the camera, but the pose works perfectly for it because she's tilted a little off to the side. It adds a completely different vibe from that flame trooper. Now we've got this Kurumi here that is the opposite. So she's facing towards the camera. However, it's her eyes that are gazing off in the distance, which gives us a much more natural look and a natural pose for this figure. Eyes are important. Make sure you're focusing on what they are doing in your portraits. So adding multiple subjects to your portraits really fills out the scene and it also puts the main subject in a certain scenario. Take this Bulbasaur for example. You can see that it's in a pack in the wild but there is like things that sell this shot. You know the first is that the, not all the Bulbasaur are looking at the camera. This draws the viewer's focus to the main Bulbasaur making others serve a, you know, a purpose instead of being a distraction. The other two are also placed either side to frame the main subject and it makes for a more natural photo. Think about other subjects in terms of setting a scene for composition and storytelling. 
Location can be a huge difference when it comes to enhancing your portraits. A blank background has its place, however, a certain scenery can really make that portrait pop. This Oddish in the Leaves is a great example of both setting the scene and mood. Looking at him, he's in his natural environment there, which that, that, that is the kind of area you would expect to see an Oddish. Now look at the Oddish's facial expression. He's obviously happy to be there. This is another example of looking at what you're shooting, studying it, and then taking a shot that suits its pose. Then we've got Grogu in the grass uh, golden hour. Obviously, this is just su such a simple shot, but by just taking him outside and putting him in the grass, it, it adds dimension, it adds life, it adds so much more to this shot as if you were just to take a normal photo film. Finally, we've got Nezuko in this forest diorama. This one, I actually had to build the scene around her here, which is something, again, which comes with practice if you're into diorama making. Finding that character, finding the mood, and building that scene to give you the image that you're after. There are no right or wrong lenses or camera settings for that matter when it comes to your portraits. Use what you have. Sometimes I'll shoot a portrait on a 50 millimeter lens. However, my favorite and go-to is a 60 millimeter macro. This is why I shoot the absolute majority of my shots on. This lens is perfect for my style of photography. It allows me to get super close to my subject. It gives me a very nice blurry background. The depth of field on it is fantastic. But like I said, use what you have. There is no right or wrong. There is no perfect. Toy photography is an art form and convey it best you can with what you have. It goes without saying, but lighting is obviously the most important aspect when it comes to photography, and the same goes with portraits. Lighting can really enhance that portrait's vibe. So take this Kurumi shot, for example, where I have her posed with her back to the camera, but looking this way. I focus the light to the side of her to enhance the features of her eye, drawing our attention, but also giving some pleasant light to her back, which is beautifully detailed. This Sebastian shot was another example of using lighting to your advantage to match that character's mood. See how we went for that much darker theme there because he's a demon butler, so that works. And you can play with colored lighting to set a mood. I've got another Kurumi shot here that has a very warm look to it. And what I did is I used fairy lights to set the mood that this particular figure was giving off to me. We also have this shot of the White Queen that has her lighting set from the back of her, which matched the scenery that I had placed her in. Again, portrait photography is a perfect opportunity for you to perfect, learn, and develop new skills. This leads me to my next tip, which is just to get creative and try new things. This shot of Rika, I was, you know, experimenting with light painting. I think it came out really well and it matched her character perfectly. Darth Maul here, I added the lightsaber motion and the glowing Sith eyes to really bring out that, you know, chaotic feeling that, that Darth Maul brings whenever he is on screen. You can also add motion to your portraits, like this Gyarados. I used the Drain Blaster to shoot water everywhere, giving it a natural vibe to what you'd expect of a Gyarados you know, to be in. And the same can be said with blowing up dirt. I did this with this Deku shot to give it a really action feel. I think it really sets the mood of this portrait. Play with effects in Photoshop. The sky is your limit, just get creative. The final tip is just to take your time. There's absolutely no rush as your subject isn't going anywhere. Think about the photo that you're trying to capture or the story that you're trying to convey. You know, try different angles, try out those different camera settings, new lighting techniques. The sky is the absolute limit, like I've said. There's absolutely no rush to it, but above all, just have fun doing this. We love like taking these photos of our toys and like some of these toys and figures that we have are very like precious to us in terms of either, you know, it's a character we love or there's a story behind that specific toy or story you're trying to convey. Have fun, D just to, like, there's no pressure at all. Just absolutely enjoy your craft and create the best images that you can with no pressure. Remember, practice, practice. There are my portrait photography tips that I have learned over the years. I hope they were helpful to you and they help you make some like really sick portrait shots of your favorite figures. Of course, if you do take any portraits, don't forget to tag me in them on Instagram. I'd love to see what you did. Uh, my handle is just down there. As always, smash that like button as it really helps me out. Hit the subscribe button for more toy photography tutorials. And till then, until then people, create something awesome. Take care of yourselves. Peace, peace.